Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you how to create this a particle attraction to an object in Typhlow. So there are several things happening here. Number one, we have a condition that tells the particles to wait for about two to four frames before they begin their path to the object. So they're just sort of being emitted with a speed. And then we have a physics collision telling the particles to collide with the object at any random. And also I'll show you how to do the material setup where you can assign a random color material to the particles. All right, so I have this starter scene here with my object. You, then we need to go under helpers, tie flow and create a tie icon. And let's put it maybe over here like this and then let's go under standard tie flow and create a tie flow object and then what i did was i went under physics and i turned off the default gravity and then you can open the editor so we're just going to create a birth to get birth to some particles and we want those particles to be born on top of this icon so we're gonna say position icon and put it right under birth and then we need to pick this icon so they are being born as expected. Then we need to give those particles some speed. So I would just add a speed operator, put it under here and say a long icon arrow and pick the icon. Then we're going to add some shape to make them look like spheres. So again, drag a shape down here, set it to 3D and let's pick the sphere mid res. And then we need to go under display and display geometry. So now we have a bunch of spheres being emitted. So now what I want is I want these spheres to be basically physics objects that interact with each other. So if they hit each other, they will bounce off of each other. So I'm going to go under physics shape and drag that under shape. And for the whole type, I'm going to say sphere. Um, so now they're basically physics spheres and you can see that they're already bouncing off the ground here and they're bouncing off of each other as well but remember that we turned off gravity um, so they're not behaving real realistically right now which is fine so i could set it up so that as soon as they're born they are immediately being attracted to the object but i want a little bit of a delay so what we're going to do is we're going to send these particles out into another event and in that event we're going to tell them to basically wait for as many frames as we want before they are attracted to the object. So I'm going to add a send out operator and put it under physics. And then I'm going to drag out a time test operator and put it here. And I'm going to connect the two. So now what I'm telling Typhlo is, I want you to take these particles and then send them into this new event. And in this new event, they are being told to wait for a value of 10 frames with a three frame variation. So I'm only going to set this to maybe three with one frame variation and we can set the display again to geometry so we can see what's happening. And visually nothing has changed because they don't really know what they're waiting for just yet. So we need to create that new event um, where they're finally going to be attracted to the object. So in order for us to attract something we need a find target operator so i'm just going to drag that out here and i'm going to connect the find target to to the time test and now for the find target i need to define the target object so i'm going to say pick and pick my statue here and now if i zoom out you can see that the particles are attracted to the statue as we told them to so again you can change the display to geometry and maybe we can go back to shape and make them a little bigger just so we can see what's going on a little better so maybe set that to 200. now you can control the acceleration of how fast they are by this velocity value here so maybe set that to 0.1 we basically have that set up except they are going through the object so we need to set up the physics collision so that they actually bounce off of this so i'm going to add a physics collision operator and put it right under find target and for the collider i'm going to pick this object here and for the whole type let's set that to mesh this will just give you better accuracy as far as how the physics simulation sees the statue so you will get the spheres interacting with all of the little details of it and you can see that that's basically the setup right there now 
what is happening is that they are being attracted to the closest point. So you can go back to find target and just change the target location to random and the point to random as well. And now they are going to be attracted to a random place across this entire piece of geometry. So at this point, this is basically my example here. So I just wanted to show you how in the end um, they basically just settle in place at a random spot across the geometry. So just to prove that this works, I can go back into the time test and set the value to maybe 10 or maybe even 20 to make it more distinct. And so now if you look at this area here, you can see that the particles are born for 20 frames with one frame variation. So I can set this to five to make it more interesting. So anywhere between 15 and 25 frames is how long these particles will wait before they are sent to this new event where they find the target and collide with it. And I'm telling you all this because this is where all the fun starts because you have all of these conditions. You have an object test, collision test, split test, surface test, and you can use all of these conditions to tell these particles to wait or not be affected until they get within a certain distance of an object or to only be affected if they pass through an object. There's so much that you can do if you start playing around with these. So I would say definitely explore and see what all of these do. One more thing I want to show you before I go is how to assign a random material to all of these particles. So you would just add another operator, which is called material ID and put that above your shape. And then you can set that to random and define how many different colors basically or different materials you want. So I'm going to set that to a maximum of five. And then you would just go into your material editor and create a multi sub object. You can say discard old map and then you would just create five different materials here. So I'm just going to do that. So for my first material, I'm just doing a reflective red V-Ray material and then I'm just going to copy this and paste it as a copy, uh, you know, four times and then you can go in and change each color to something else. Now that you have five different colors, you can just take this sub object material and apply it to tie flow and all of the particles will now have one of the five materials that you defined. And in order for you to render this out and for the particles to show up in VR, you need to add a mesh operator here. And now if I hit render, it's going to show up as it should. And you can, you know, make it look pretty, use whatever kind of geometry you want, play around. So I hope that you guys found this helpful. If you are confused by anything, definitely check out this tutorial for absolute beginners for Tyflow, which I posted yesterday. And I have a ton of other tutorials on my channel. Um, if you found this helpful, I would appreciate if you would subscribe and I would appreciate if you would hit the thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you later.